Let's talk about the psychiatry department chair at Columbia University. He's been suspended after commenting on a photo of a South Sudanese model. Here is the photo, folks. Dr. Jeffrey Lieberman tweeted, whether a work of art or freak of nature, she's a beautiful sight to behold. Bill Lieberman lost his position as psychiatrist in chief at Columbia University Irving Medical Center, New York Presbyterian Hospital. As a result of this, uh, the model, Nakeem Gatwick, has been named Queen of the Dark and uses her platform to share self-acceptance and body positivity. Now, Dr. Lieberman did apologize. He admitted his comments were racist and sexist. He said he will, he will make personal changes to regain the public's trust. You believe him, Cleo? I don't know the dude. Um, well, I, I know you don't know the damn dude, <laughs> Cleo. Shit, I'm talking about the damn story. I ain't say y'all well, hanging, damn. Uh, I don't know the dude. The reason I said that is because I can't answer the question whether I believe him or not until I know him and you know I'm in his presence. Like, no, but, but, here's my, but here's my whole point. Here you are, you, you, have this, you have this photo. Go ahead and pull it back up. And you, you see what he actually says here, okay? Yes. Whether a work of art or freak of nature, she's a beautiful sight to behold. First of all, what the hell is a freak of nature? And see, and, and the reason I think the, the, the language is important, let's extend this thing beyond even this guy commenting on this photo. When you listen to the certain language of basketball commentators and football commentators and how they describe black athletes in terms of uh, uh, the, typically using super, superhuman or using, um, uh, using uh, animalistic terms, uh, it, again, it's so, oh, this is like, oh my God, just so unbelievably different than anything we've ever seen in our lives. And it's like, freak of nature? Really? His, problem, his, his commentary is very problematic, but I'm not sure he knows why. I'm not sure he gets it intrinsically in terms of what's problematic about what he said. Everybody apologizes, especially these white folks who say crazy stuff. They always want to see why but I'm not sure if there's this association or transformation because there is a difference. People often disassociate from something that's going to be cause criticism, particularly when, they be, when they're going to be called racist. But does that mean that there's been a transformation? That's what I'm saying. See, I, 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 I really believe, and again, I, I'm not sitting here letting anybody off the hook, uh, Michael, but I, I really do believe that what you have here um, really speaks to... Um, Whenever I'm talking about the issue of racism, again, here's what happens in this country. We say, uh, give me a solo shot. This, this is what we do right here. We go, racist, not racist. And so then our conversations, Michael, tend to be, I'm not racist, you are racist. As opposed to all of this stuff that's in between these two. And that right. is where most people actually lie. And so here's a guy who's thinking, I, he, let me follow my sword. Uh, I, and some people say, I don't, I don't want to see what the, what the whole big deal is without realizing is how have we been conditioned? Somebody, somebody might see me wear this and I might go to the store and they might go, oh, you're going to a costume party? <laughs> Why? Because we have been conditioned in this country to think, Oh, you, 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 you wearing a costume because that's not what is common for us. And what we have to understand is that that's what you're dealing with. When, when, when you show the picture again, so when you see the picture again, how does it? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Look at this magnificent. Listen to my language. Look at this magnificent creature. If you think about that phrase, magnificent creature that is rarely assigned to a white woman. But it will be, no, 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 I'm serious. But it will be used typically to describe a non-white woman, Michael. Well, yeah, he, he's looking at her as something exotic or some type of exotic creature. And the reason why it's not used, that term is not used for white women is because in this culture, white women are held up as the standard of beauty. So what, you know, the, the one of the things that's problematic with the with his tweet is he used the term freak of nature, whether a work of art or a freak of nature. If you want to say this is a beautiful woman, say that. You didn't have to use the phrase freak of nature. But the, the other thing is there's something deeper here. 
in this society and in other European societies, but especially this one, there's a fear of African people. There's a fear of black people because, um, because of our melanin, we have the ability to genetically wipe white people off the face of the earth. And this is why they had anti-miscegenation laws in this country, to keep Africans from intermi- especially African men, from intermixing with white women, okay? Uh, even though we did, we know it happened the other way around. But th- th- you had laws put in place to preserve genetic white survival. So there's, th- there's this lingering fear of dark skin. And when he says freak of nature, what, what he's really saying is, is that for me to say this is beautiful is counter to really what I've been taught. But see, let, 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 me, let me unpack it even further. So if you really break, if you really break down, I'm going to go on this other monitor. If you really break down this picture, I'll pull the picture back up. If you break down this picture here, um, she's glistening. I guarantee you, t- put a picture of the same woman in her native setting, they ain't saying that. See what I mean? See, so what, ha- so, what the, so what happens is, with this photo, it becomes, oh my goodness. So she's sitting on the bed, she's glistening, she's glowing. Oh, whether a work of art or freak of nature, she's a beautiful sight to behold. I can guarantee you if that same image was her in her native country, that would not be the reaction. Roland, my concern is that black, there's a lot of black people who see her the same way he does. I agree. No, I'm not, I'm not saying just him. See, I, that's, why I expand, that's why I expanded the thing. It's, oh, we're now seeing her through our prism. Oh, this she's glistening, wearing what she's wearing, sitting on the bed, reading a newspaper. Oh, now, now she's gorgeous. Now she's amazing. Now she's uh, this, this freak of nature. But, but you wouldn't say the same level of beauty if it, she was in her native setting. But we mad at this white man for saying it. And we have become internalized white supremacists in terms of our beauty standard disproportionately as yes, well. Yes, we have. And that, that needs to be addressed as seriously as this white dude. Well, actually, which is what, well, mm-hmm. first of all, I do. Uh, in fact, w- w- uh, that was one of the things when I was uh, talking to a variety of groups when I was in Liberia uh, for eight days. That was one of the things that we talked about. We talked, we talked about the depths of white supremacy. We talked about how even we... Uh, view things. We, we, we talk about, because when we were talking about this history, because what they're celebrating this year, they're celebrating uh, the 200th anniversary of uh, the people, formerly uh, enslaved people of African descent going to Liberia and actually um, starting the country. Well, you already had indigenous people there, so the land that they they was bought. And so I was talking to this one sister who's been doing research, and she talked about how sad it was to read these letters of these folks who were African-American who were just talking about uh, their the friction and not getting along with the indigenous people because those African-Americans brought over those European-American ways. They brought over the system of slavery with them. Uh, it was also very interesting that um, the um, guys pull up a photo of President George Weah. Um, and I forgot, he told me, I, but I, don't, I can't, he told me about uh, uh, the outfits that he, uh, he wears now. Uh, and he called it uh, a profo, proto, I, I just can't remember. Uh, and so really what it is, is, and, and all of a sudden, all these men in Liberia uh, have been wearing, and so essentially, uh, it's, um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a linen top, linen bottom, and they wear them with tennis shoes. He's a former, uh, uh, you know, international soccer star. And he said, I'm bringing this back. Why? Because, yeah, that's the photo right there. So if y'all go ahead and pull that photo up. Why? Because of the African-American influence, which means the European influence, they wore suits and ties. They didn't actually, many of them didn't wear, first of all, they were six to 
there are 16 tribes there. And so you have these, what they were call uh, uh, Comerico Liberians, some call them uh, the Congo people, but they brought those ways. And so again, so what he's saying is I am embracing our, uh, our history, embracing uh, our culture. And so uh, he's been wearing uh, outfits like that. And so it's, I forgot again the name, but, uh, but a lot of the men are now wearing that same thing. How the influence of those African Americans on this African country change that culture and how they operated, and how that and how they that is they have been in conflict in that African country for all of these years because of that worldview. And so, what one of the things that the yeah, go ahead, go ahead. One of the things. One of the things that the brother said earlier, the educator, was that we, we have Google now and we have access to all this, all this information. And, and Michael Hotep is a, a brilliant historian. I bring that in the, in the, into the conversation because people Google what they value and, and they Google what they, are, what they can fathom and what they have been taught to care about. So there's wonderful inf information out there about black people, about black beauty, about black culture, about black history that never makes the Google search among black people because we haven't been trained to value what comes from black people. But also, and some of us but also, Cleo, it doesn't make the Google search because the Google search is not being programmed by black people. One of the things that, I don't know if y'all could find it, please find the Super Bowl commercial that Google did for their new Pixel phone. And there were some people who said, oh, here's Google playing the race car in the Super Bowl, not realizing that literally these devices have not been designed to properly take photos of black people. The, I, I, the whole deal, Matt, right now with artificial intelligence is that literally AI has artificial intelligence has often shown, and there's a documentary that's on Netflix, you folks ought to check it out, where sometimes when a black person is seen in AI, an animal comes up. They've talked about how the racism is built into the artificial intelligence. So even when you talk about the inability uh, to Google, it's what's inputted in Google. I can tell everybody who's watching right now, let me pull it up, that, that, we, that, that we have been battling Facebook, to some degree, even YouTube, over our content, because what happens is African Americans, we might use the word black, and our content is stricken or is placed in the category of domestic terrorists. Same thing as the Proud Boys. And so all of a sudden, our views uh, have been limited. Our, we've been throttled uh, by the algorithm as a result of our content. Perfect example. We're sitting here right now. Look, I've got 1.3 million followers on Facebook. Right now, 124 are watching. I, 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 I hit, uh, I hit uh, folks at Facebook. Three years ago, Matt, I was told there's a glitch in their system. September, <laughs> September, Matt, I was told there's a glitch in their system. So you, you can't explain. There's no way you can explain to me how I have 1.3 million followers on Facebook, and there are only 124 watching the live stream. And really in the past, I would say year and a half, we've rarely exceeded 400 when we used to have two and 3,000. Uh, mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yep. You're dangerous. They don't want your information out to the people. I mean, that's all that is. And that glitch is going to be there every time, the same way every time you go to McDonald's, the ice cream machine doesn't work. It's the same thing. Not, <laughs> not, not, not the ice cream machine. Uh, I was mentioning, and uh, we're going to go three more minutes. I was mentioning the, that Google commercial. Uh, I ain't trying to give folk anything free. Uh, so uh, why don't I do this here? Put me in a box and put the commercial in a box. I ain't trying to give them a free damn ad. Announcement. Pull the audio up, please. At Whole Foods. Announcement. Colin left the oysters in the car for five hours. <laughs> Probably better Alexa can't read your mind. Bad idea. What's the game? Something's brewing at D and D. All right, so y'all got some audio playing in the back of that deal. So just kill the audio, please. 
Let's kill the audio. So what y'all are seeing here, they're showing with their new phone real tones. There were white folks on social media who were saying, Google playing the race car. No, they were talking about how the technology is used against us. All of these things, going back to this, psycho psych this, this professor, all of these things are a part of how this system does not see us as being as equal when the system, whether we're talking about technology, whether we're talking about Google, whether we're talking about phones, whether we're talking about how, we, how people have looked at photography, it is all through the prism of whiteness and, <laughs> and seeing us as different and as, yes, as exotic and yes, as creatures or freaks of nature. Michael. Yeah, Roland, you know, th this is why we have to challenge these images. You know, the, the, the humanization of African people has always been entertainment in this country. Whether you go back to 1828, 29, T.D. Rice, Thomas Dartmouth Rice, who uh, is known as the father of the minstrel shows and created the Jim Crow character. Uh, and this becomes, the, the minstrel shows become one of the most popular forms of entertainment in the country, in the North and the South. And it's, it's, it's uh, uh, lampooning and making fun of, especially enslaved Africans. And then there was a uh, uh, th th there was a city slicker who was the sidekick of Jim Crow, and his name was Zip, the the c word that we don't use on this show. And he was a northerner, and they and and um, they created this person. He wore the finest clothing, but they were showing that even if you educate African Americans, they're still going to be ignorant. I, I encourage people to check out the uh, Jim Crow Museum at Ferris State University on their website. Dr. David Pilgrim uh, uh, runs that museum. They have some tremendous uh, documentation there. But this is why we have to fight back against these images. We, You only protect what you respect. Okay, you only protect what you respect and, you know, what you do for yourself, what you do to yourself and what you allow the people to do to you and get away with is based upon what you think about yourself. This is why we have to take back our history, culture, take back our minds and fight back against these images. All right, folks, back to our whole Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. The video looks phenomenal. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. You can't be Black-owned media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig? 